Uh, and we're back with part two of the Van Halen Tour amp restoration. Um, I've gotten a little more information on it uh, uh, since uh, part one and I've uh, decided to go on ahead and make this quick video here to kind of uh, get the power amp working. So basically uh, I went ahead and I fitted uh, two more uh, Sylvania STR387 uh, tubes which are branded PV. Uh, Super 6, which are the accessory tubes that PV used to sell. These are the uh, original American Sylvania tubes that were shipped with the amps when they first uh, came out. Um, so anyways, I grabbed four of them, and in the true spirit of uh, the way they were originally shipped, I did not match them, uh, because none of the amps that Eddie ever got had matched tubes, as far as I was told. Uh, they would just pull four tubes and put them in there. And the amps came out of stock biased, uh, fairly cold, so at the end of the day, it kind of it just kind of gave the amp, the power amp, a little more of a unique character. Um, so anyway, let's uh, power it up here and see what we got. Um, now I'm going to be uh, driving it with this signal generator because I found out in my last video that this one had a dirty pot. Um, and while this is warming up, let's look at a couple other things. Um, you may have heard some hype about the output transformers on the old 5150s versus the newer ones, uh, which actually the newer 6505 1992 original, um, I developed that with PV, uh, at PV uh, with, with our design team there. And uh, one of the uh, differences in these old output transformers and the ones that were coming out later was that the, uh, the there'd be variations in the windings and uh, slight uh, tolerances in the stack because they used a lot cheaper steel uh, in these original output transformers. Originally they were made by a company called Electrical Windings um, and that was a carryover from the uh, the old days of PV. I think that was probably the first transformer vendor that they used for, for tube amplifiers when they started making tube amps. Uh, and then uh, later while I was working there around the time Eddie left PV uh, swapped over to Basler who was the, also the power transformer manufacturer. And those were really good transformers but uh, there'd be variations because they were made of fairly inexpensive steel and uh, for the newer ones what we did is we basically went to a higher grade of steel uh, with a little bit less stack but it, it maintained all the best magnetic characteristics of the older ones. Um, it just gave us a lot more consistency and a lot more focus mid-range. Um, another thing you'll notice is uh, some of the, old, the, the ones from this era will have a welded seam. Uh, between the base plate and the uh, stack on the output transformer, which you know a lot of say, people say can, contributes to it having less low end, and there's also some benefit to that. Um, but this design's interesting, and uh, there's some stories that Howard Dumble actually used some of the 160 watt versions of these that were in the Mace. Uh, he would buy them from service and put them into the uh, six two models that he sold, uh, and I, I haven't verified that, but. If I ever get my hands on one, the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if it has a base output transformer. But, uh, but anyways, uh, this should have had time to warm up. So let's see, uh, make sure all of our basic uh, voltages are solid. Here we got uh, okay, our plate. It's 519. Let's flip the stand down. 478. So we're drawing some current. That's good. Um, the bias voltage look somewhere. Here we go. Yeah, minus 58. So this bias is fairly cold. So let's put a signal into it. We're going to go take the uh, signal straight into the effects return. And I'm running it at about a one kilohertz sine wave, I think. So the output's going to come out right here. So let's see what we got. And it's it's alive. Um, really symmetrical, not very much crossover distortion. Let's take it on into clipping. Okay, now I'm running this at eight ohms on the eight ohm tap since I have all four tubes in there now. So spread that out a little. Okay, now that notice the clipping there is just real. Uh, there's not very much ripple. If you scrunch it in, you can see this ripple on top of it. What that is is 60 hertz from the power supply. 
Now I don't mind running one of these at full power because I know that the transformers and the power supply can handle it. Um, since it's a prototype, I'm going to take it a little bit easy on it. So let's just see what the what the measured full power was here. At probably between five and ten percent distortion. We're looking at about 31 volts. Uh, I hit my frequency button there. Okay, so um, 31 squared is 961. So divided by eight is about 120 watts, which is exactly what you'd expect to get. Um, so we have a functional power amp putting out 120 watts. I haven't tried to put a signal through the preamp yet because I know for a fact there's a problem just because of a couple of the parts that are missing. So uh, in the next segment we're going to go through and verify all that. We should have a fully working amplifier and um, hopefully I can get some of the cosmetic parts together. Um, I believe that these were shipped to Van Halen uh, for their uh, For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge Tour and the first shows that the four amplifiers were used at was in Atlanta according to uh, my friend that designed these and uh, the the four went on tour uh, for the first half and then came back and then uh, were rebuilt and they sent them four production units I think to finish uh, to finish the tour with uh, so that's what was told to me so um, I uh, haven't really found any information besides that as far as the cosmetics go. Um, one person told me that they think that they might have been in black head shells. Um, and I, I have a reason to believe that they did have the uh, machine 5150 logos and the flat metal PV badges on the front of them. So whenever I get all those parts together, we'll uh, uh, do a video on that. But I, I suspect before I get the cosmetic part of it done that we will have the uh, preamp working and we'll be able to hear it. Um, but we could go ahead and listen to this right now, actually. I have a, I have a different preamp that we can try. Um, a friend of mine at work is working on this. It's the PVVTM preamp. And an interesting story about the VTM is that I was told that when Eddie first came to PV, uh, one of the amplifiers that he tried was a VTM. And that supposedly that sold him on the fact that PV can execute a really good uh, Marshall style amplifier, basically a high gain amplifier. Um, and I believe this was the first amp that James ever designed, James Brown. Um, so, and you know, in that logical succession, it went from the VTM to the 5150. Um, and um, let's see, see if we can uh, get it to make some noise here. Totally unprepared for this video. We just wanted to knock something out real quick so that we could keep some momentum going. We had an awful lot of interest in this and so I was going to try to get the power ramp working pretty quick. Alright, you see uh, hitting full power with a guitar straight into the effects return, which is, is pretty characteristic of these amps. They have a lot of, a lot of gain. So um, I have to put it onto a speaker load instead of a resistor here. So. I think I have an 8 ohm here. We're going to keep the volume down a little because I got grandbabies asleep in the house and we don't want to blow this power amp up. But right off the bat, you can see that it's got a pretty good bit of residual hum to it. feedback circuit of the power amp is also functional. Um, let's plug a preamp into it and listen here. VTM preamp here. It's uh, like a hot rodded Marshall. Let's listen to the uh, listen to the power amp controls here. Yeah, 
minutes. I think it maybe it has a lot more. Let's see if the president's still here. Just like a stock 5150, it does everything between 8 and 10. Uh, and we see here that Eddie had to mark on 7, which would be like probably about 4 on a regular Marshall. So these were his settings. And of course, we don't know what the real preamp sounded like, but. Uh Functional and uh, I don't want to tax it too much because that home's starting to make me a little nervous. But uh, anyways, uh, we will uh, come back to it when we can get the power uh, preamp going. And I uh, um, hope you enjoyed this part. And uh, sorry it's uh, so crude and on such short notice, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And please leave your comments if you know anything about uh, what the cosmetics of these amps might have been originally when they were shipped. Um, like I said, I'm thinking that it would have had a black head shell and. Uh, machine logo and a flat metal PD, but um, if you have any more insight on that, let me know and uh, we'll talk about it next time and hopefully we can hear the complete amplifier and uh, we'll go from there and thanks for watching and uh, please tell your friends. Thank you.